Hello guys, so uh, very very good evening. Welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep, the most comprehensive preparation app for all the computer exams. So today I welcome you all to my session that is a coffee with concept. So that is the uh, basics of formal languages. So in today's session we are going to learn about uh, what are the basic things required for formal languages and automata theory and also I am going to give you brief relations between the formal languages. Okay. I welcome you all. Uh, please uh, share the session and subscribe the channel and do like the session. And I am going to start theory of computation. Just uh, I wanted to give you the basics of formal languages in a nutshell. So all of you, I am waiting all of you. So uh, you will learn a lot in this uh, 15 minutes of lecture. You can visualize the subject in such a way that the other topics can be understood very easily. Okay. So I welcome you once again uh, to this session and please do like this session and share this channel. And this is uh, Murli Krishna. I am having 21 plus years of teaching experience and trained more than 50,000 students across the country. And also I am a topper in uh, uh, theory of computation conducted by NPTEL course IIT Kharagpur. And also uh, the IGIP certification is there. So I am uh, certified as international engineering educator. And these are my subjects like theory of computation, TOC, that's what I am teaching you right now. Operating systems, computer organization, computer networks, digital logic and ICT. Okay, now let's move on to the subject. And basically, just uh, I wanted to give you definition in short form. And then I wanted to show you uh, visualized uh, approach for uh, understanding the formal languages and their relations. Okay, so basically a formal language is an abstract uh, of general characteristics of programming languages. So, all the uh, computer languages are originated from the languages which we are going to study right now. Any formal language consists of set of symbols and rules for formation of sentences and all. And also some formal grammars will be there for uh, framing the sentences of a language. And uh, basically uh, the topics I am going to cover uh, in the theory of computation in the courses uh, coming like regular languages, regular grammars, finite automata. This is uh, entire uh, formal languages in a nutshell. And uh, so these are the four types of formal languages we are going to cover. Regular languages, context-free languages, context-sensitive languages, recursively and recursive enumerable languages. These are all the set of formal languages which we are going to study in theory of computation and their grammatical representations and also the mathematical representation. That is a machine counterpart of the formal languages we are going to study. And let's see, uh, if you see the hierarchy of formal languages, so Chomsky has defined one hierarchy for the all set of formal languages. You can just see this. Okay, so uh, regular sets, regular languages, these are type 3 languages, uh, those are recognized by finite state machine and then DCFLs recognized by deterministic pushdown automata, CFLs uh, recognized by the pushdown automata and then recursive and recursively enumerable sets uh, decided by the Turing machine. Okay. And there are partially decidable and completely decidable languages. And uh, if you study in detail the languages concepts and their representation grammatically and their representation in the form of machine counterpart, then you can understand, you can visualize the relation between the languages. Okay. So in a nutshell, just I wanted to tell you what are the things we are going to study in this subject so that uh, most of the students uh, will be having a fear in theory of computation. But theory of computation is very, very easy if you can visualize the subject in abstract view. Okay, so nobody will be having so detailed discussion uh, in advance. Okay, so definitely we have to study the subject and by visualizing the subject in advance first. What is the content of the subjects? What for we are studying it? And for designing the compilers for the, for, uh, the programming languages, we used to have this primarily. Okay, and there are so many other applications for this subject what is computable, what is not computable, all these things we can understand by using this. And uh, there are some languages which are non-computable languages. Those are called as non-recursively enumerable languages. These are the just uh, outline view of all the uh, content of formal languages here. And if you see the relation, regular languages are related to regular grammar. And uh, regular grammars are called type 3 grammars here. And then context free languages, okay are recognized by the context free grammars. Those are recognized by machine counterpart as pushdown automata. And also context sensitive languages recognized by context sensitive grammars. And that is uh, recognized by linear bounded automata. 
and uh, recursive enumerable languages recognized by Turing machine. Those are called type 0. If you see this relation, once again, I wanted to show you this relation. So first, every type 3 language is also type 2. Every type 2 is also type 1. Every type 1 is also type 0. So that means every regular language is a context free language. Every context free language is a context sensitive language. And every context sensitive language is recursively or recursively enumerable languages. So this is the relation among the formal languages that is defined by the norm Chomsky. That's why these are called Chomsky hierarchy of formal languages, you can say. Now, if you can see regular languages recognized by a machine counterpart as finite automata, that means finite automata is having a capacity to recognize only regular languages. It can't recognize a language which is not regular. Okay. So just like I wanted to tell you one example, you can see this. For example, you take the pushdown automata. Pushdown automata can recognize both the context view languages and also regular languages. So that means very simple. Let us suppose if you take a CD player and also DVD player. What makes the difference? Normal CD earlier. Nowadays we are using DVD. DVD also not there. Everything is uh, we are playing a multimedia system nowadays. Now basically, uh, just as an example, I am taking. You can play the DVD. Okay, uh, in a DVD player only. A CD also can be played in a DVD player, but DVD cannot be recognized by the CD player. Okay, compact disc. Okay, so that means power uh, capacity, the recognizing capacity. So Pushdown automata is a uh, powerful than a finite automata where it can recognize both regular languages and also context free languages. Every regular language is a context free language, but all context free languages need not necessarily be regular. That is the concept here. Okay, that is the type 2 language. And also, every context free language is also context sensitive and that is recognized by the linear bounded automata, which is powerful than pushdown automata and powerful than finite automata. So, finally, recursive enumerable languages which includes recursive and recursive enumerable, it is a type 0, those can be recognized by Turing machines. Where Turing machine is a uh, powerful machine when compared to all other machines. So, Turing machine we can construct for any type of language like regular language, context free language, context sensitive language and also recursively enumerable languages. I hope everybody understood this. Basically, uh, this subject is about how to construct a machine counterpart for the formal languages and how to construct a grammar for the formal languages so that you can understand the recognizing possibility, recognizing categories of the languages. So making use of that, we can define the programming languages and we can design the compilers for the programming languages. Am I right? Okay. So these are all actually finite automata, pushdown automata, linear bounded automata, Turing machine. These are a lot of physical machines. These are all abstract machines, okay, for recognizing the formal languages. So what can be done, what cannot be done, all those things are discussed here, okay. So if you see the relation between the formal languages, as I told you, if you take a type 3, so every type 3 language is also type 2 language. And every type 2 language is also type 1 language. And every type 1 language is also type 0 language. So as I told you, so that means we can say type 3 is the proper subset of type 2 and which is the subset of type 1 and also which is the subset of type 0. So what does it mean? Every regular language is also context free language. Every context free language is also context sensitive. Every context sensitive is also recursive enumerable language, but not vice versa. So all context sensitive languages need not necessarily be context free. All context free languages need not necessarily be regular. All recursively enumerable languages need not be context sensitive. So it may or may not be. So recognition capability also. So finite automata can recognize regular languages. Then above that pushdown automata is powerful than finite automata. Again, linear bounded automata, which is powerful than pushdown automata. Again, Turing machine, which is powerful than linear bounded automata. So these are the four abstract machines. And these machines are just uh, for representing the languages mathematically or we can say machine counterpart. In general, how can you define a formal language? What do you mean by a, a word formal? What do you mean by a word formal here? So formal is nothing but any language which is defined with formal alphabet. So that means uh, in India, there are so many languages. But all the languages are not formal languages. The languages which are having a script, 
which are having a proper grammar those languages only considered as a formal languages okay for instance if you take english okay english is a formal language okay and what is alphabet for this formal language a to z is alphabet for the formal language and english has a grammar what do you mean by grammar grammar is nothing but some set of rules we follow for framing the sentences of a language sentences of a language so just like english language has a grammar hindi has a grammar telugu has a grammar every language will have a grammar okay so the way we are framing the sentences will be requiring some rules those are called grammar rules similarly for any formal language which are defined for generation of computer languages programming languages those are actually for example c language c language is originated from this hierarchy of formal languages only and pascal is originated from this okay so by the time you finish the subject c language is which type of language you can understand whether it is cfl or csl etc and pascal is which type of language fortran is which type of language you can understand all these things but what are the basic mathematical approaches required for understanding all these things we are going to study in this subject that's what i am going to tell you in this small session just to give you outline of what is there in the subject and what is the content available here and uh, in order to remove the fear of theory of computation especially i have taken this uh, concept uh, with the cup of coffee okay this theory of computation is just like a cup of coffee if you attend the classes uh, all the classes regularly and whether it is youtube session or paid batch or app whatever it is whatever all we are conducting you can just uh, attend the class so you can uh, definitely get succeeded so i hope uh, every one of you have enjoyed this session and please do like this session and also subscribe the channel and you can share with your friends i hope every one of you have enjoyed it and uh, in coming sessions i will be teaching uh, different different concepts with animated content for theory of computation operating systems and uh, computer networks the computer organization digital logic information and communication technology these things i am going to teach thank you very much thank you one and all nice uh, making you thank you thank you so much